welcome back Nerdlings. Today we're going to be taking a look at the glorious baggage train. But before we start, be sure to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss an update. Right, baggage trains. What the hell are they? I hear you cry. The baggage train, in all its glory, was introduced in the early editions of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. They provided interesting storytelling opportunities, could be used as objectives during a battle, or simply as a nice addition to your army when on display. As a technical aside, a baggage train and logistics have been used in actual armies for millennia. The Greeks, Romans and even Hannibal used them to great success as they understood that an army marches on its stomach. So baggage trains were used to ferry food, supplies and useful kit to the front lines and could return with various loot, slaves and of course injured personnel that needed treating or, alternatively, if they were too far gone to be treated, then disposed of. There seems to have been a renaissance in baggage trains somewhat recently, well, certainly within the last few years. There are various Reddit posts mentioning them and, and how to build them, as New Age of Sigmar players end up wanting to build supporting elements into their armies. Good old boys return to their old hammer collections and stalwarts of the hobby continue to build and iterate on them in their blogs. Let's have a look at the Warhammer Fantasy Battle rulebook and see what that says about baggage trains. Probably the quintessential baggage train is from the Empire Army, a classic medieval style army that mimics many real world medieval armies in its fashion, troops and war machines. So let's have a read. Imperial armies benefit from the most well organised and useful baggage trains of any old world nation. Their wagons are so sturdy that their baggage train is sometimes known as the Wagenberg because it looks like a small fortified town when drawn upon in lager. Nobles and knights of the empire have a serious and professional attitude to warfare and bring along servants and armourers to clean and repair their equipment. Cooks and victuallers are important since imperial soldiers like a substantial meal before a battle and, of course, there are the bucks and frau lines bearing refreshing steins of lager for the troops after a hard day's hacking. An imperial baggage train is represented by one wagon and five civilians per 1,000 points worth of troops. These civilians will have standard human profiles, are unarmoured and use improvised weapons. If the army includes halfling allies, the baggage train may have halfling civilians instead of human. Enlightening, I think you'll agree. But how does this slot into my Chaos Army? Well, let's have a look at what is said about a Chaos Baggage Train. Bringing up the rear of any Chaos Horde may be seen the hideous train of camp followers. Foul beings including those mutants too far gone to be worth putting in the battle line. They accompany awesome creaking wagons of horrific form, riddled with woodworm and decay and drawn by pathetically deformed beasts of burden. These weird wains are piled high with cages, cauldrons and sinister inlay caskets, whilst implements of torture and insane ritual are hung about them. A continuous eerie sighing emanates from the sad shuffling and cowled figures groping behind the wagons. A chaotic baggage train is represented by one wagon and three followers per 1000 points in the army. These should have Chaos Cultist profiles and improvised weapons. Lovely stuff. So, for the most part, there are similarities. They include wagons, various hangers-on, and are designed to support a certain amount of troops. Of course, if you don't collect either of these armies, the basic rule is the same. Let's briefly visit the other races baggage trains and see how they differ. Bretonian nobles are inclined to bring an entourage of servants with them and enough baggage to allow them to live in the courtly manner to which they are accustomed. Inevitably, these magnificent retinues attract scruffy peasants, vagabonds and other good-for-nothings, hoping to scavenge the fields of glory for loot. A Bretonian baggage train is represented by one wagon and five camp followers per 1,000 points worth of rank and file troops in the army. Baggage followers are unarmoured and use improvised weapons. The armies of Nagaroth are burdened with the countless instruments of ritual as well as the usual supplies and non-combatants. 
great cauldrons, spits, tongs, cages and all the tools of torture will be needed once they have gained possession of the fields of slaughter. The baggage attendants comprise a great multitude of the very young, the old and the infirm. Among them will be a few ancient and malicious hag witches kindling the fires of spite and resentment. A dark elf baggage train is represented by one wagon and five elves per 1000 points worth of troops. These will have standard dark elf profiles, are unarmoured and use improvised weapons. Dwarves are an organised and disciplined people and this is reflected in their well ordered and provisioned baggage trains. To serve as a baggage guard is no dishonour and many young dwarfs receive their first combat experience in this capacity. In addition, a baggage train will of necessity include a mobile forge and smithy, a kiln cart for baking bread, wagons to carry the troops' possessions, and, of course, a beer wagon so that the fighting dwarfs can slake their considerable thirst. A dwarf baggage train will consist of one wagon and five dwarfs per 1000 points in the army. Dwarfs with the baggage have standard dwarf profiles, are unarmoured, and use improvised weapons. High elves often bring with them many servants, minstrels, bards and other attendants to entertain them in their magnificent tents while on campaigns. Sea elves frequently venture far inland and need to bring provisions and trade goods with them. An elven baggage train is represented by one wagon and five non-warrior elves per 1000 points worth of troops. These civilians will have standard elf profiles, are unarmoured and use improvised weapons. The ragtag followers that trail after an orc and goblin army are vile, destitute and quarrelsome beyond even the disgustingly low standards set by orc warriors. Heavy and multiple dugged orc womenfolk make up the majority of the baggage train, their mewling offspring, the aged whelps and assorted hangers on make up the rest. Those too infirm, old or stupid be drafted into the army can make a good living by working the baggage. Drivers, cooks, leather workers, smiths, bunco artists and all manner of worthless scum can profit by hanging around the army. Taking advantage of the confusion they loot, pillage, burn and steal along with the rest of the army as well as sharing in the fun, torturing captives and the spoils, eating captives. An old baggage train is represented by a single squalid wagon and five followers for every 1,000 points worth of rank and file troops in the army. Baggage followers always include at least one orc and one goblin model, plus any other models of a goblinoid race represented in the army. Baggage followers are unarmoured and use improvised weapons. In the dense jungles in which the slan live, baggage must be transported on foot. For this onerous task, the slan use bearers, frequently castrated and lobotomized human slaves. Because slan don't use wagons, their baggage contingents are larger than most armies. The baggage consists of five slan bearers and five human slaves per 1,000 points worth of troops. All members of the baggage have standard profiles for their type, are unarmored, and use improvised weapons. Wood elves rarely employ baggage trains except when campaigning far from their woodland homes. A wood elf baggage train is represented by one wagon and five civilians per 1000 points in the army. The civilians have standard wood elf profiles, are unarmoured and use improvised weapons. Ok, now the background is out of the way, let's move on to what I have done with my baggage train. As you know, I finished a fab old school looking baggage train in the first series of Barocca. However, I wanted to expand the scope of it. Bearing in mind I have far more than just 1,000 points of troops, I thought it would be appropriate to include some more wagons and some more crazies in support of them. To that end, I have repurposed my undead corpse cart as a supporting wagon, and I have also built the fantastic Chaos Dwarf baggage train from the old school miniatures Kickstarter. In the future I aim to get maybe another one or two depending on the styling of the jail cart being released by old school miniatures. But for now I think they are a pretty decent addition to the army. I was also considering rebasing my Carnival of Chaos carts as they might come in handy in a, a future video or, or photo shoot. 
However, for now, I think I'll keep them on their large oval bases. What with about 80 Chaos Dwarfs, 40 Chaos Warriors to paint, and another 20 to rebase, I, I really don't want to end up buying off more than I can chew with this project. After all, it has already grown more arms and legs than I ever intended it to, with a whole cohort of beastmen and assorted monsters, the Chaos Dwarf army with green skin slaves, and branching out into a possible barbarian horde too. All of that on top of what was originally supposed to be simply a complete set of pre-slotter Chaos Warriors. My aim was to include a real hodgepodge of different creatures as advised in the rulebook. So, my evil lord recruited a Slothman, Mudman, Beastman, a Lizardman, some men-at-arms in the form of an Orc and Human, not to mention an Ostrichman, a strange demon with no body, a goblin fanatic, and, of course, Zygor, the three-armed mutant. I don't think the group could be any more varied than that. Uh, Twelve assorted freaks, uh, including the evil lord, for the three wagons. Be sure to check out all the fab websites I sourced the pictures of models from in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. What did you like most about my baggage train? Be sure to comment, like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching. Peace.